All right, guys, home run stretch for today. This will be our third recording on He Teaches Us to Profit. This will be number nine in our series. I um, want to cap off something that we spoke about in uh, video eight. And at the end there, we were talking about the people that actually bear fruit when they hear the word of God concerning a thing. And in this instance, it's prosperity, being taught to profit, using our flagship verses, 1 John 2, 27, Isaiah 48, 17, um, an abiding teacher of prosperity in your spirit. All right. And then we've talked about issues of the soul, the demonic strongholds, the mental avenues that prosperity winds up getting headed off at, you know, and run out of town, that kind of a thing. And uh, at the end of this last video, we talked about how two things are crucial to the word bearing fruit, 30, 60, and 100 fold. One is that you understand what you hear. Another is that you receive. Matthew 13 uses the word understand. Um, it says if you don't understand it, immediately the devil comes to steal that word of profiting and prosperity. You know, God could say, write a book, and you'd be like, I don't know how, and then there you go. <laughs> well, that's the end of that. And, uh, and so, well, who would, po you know, you, you get hung up on the how instead of the what. You get hung up on the how instead of the God of the impossible. And so then we said in, Ma in Mark 4, he uses the word instead of understand, he says they receive the word. Well, let me give you those words defined in the Greek. So the word understand in the Greek is to put together. So when you're listening to prosperity messages, listen for how those thoughts and verses, uh, principles and truths and steps are put together for you individually, for you personally. You know, maybe even take notes to the point of, you know what, my first step after hearing this is gonna be such and such. My second step is gonna be this. My third is gonna be this. You know. Psalm 139, we talked about how he's written your days down in a book before you were ever even born. Not the book of life, but the book of your life. And then in Psalm 90 verse 12, he says, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. And, and what do numbers represent? Why would he tell us to assign your day a number? Well, because numbers have to do with order. Um, they have to do with uh, completion. They have to do with importance. You know, the number one is the first order, the most important. Um, number 10 maybe is the final step. It, it's not as important as one, but without it, you don't complete things. And so he, he says, I want you to think of numbers as you think of your days. And I mean, you can get legalistic and get bogged down in ditches with lists and stuff like that. So I mean, don't be get, get all religious about it. But you ought to have some kind of, a, of an idea of some action steps you're gonna take after hearing nine different messages on he teaches us to profit you see and if you'll study these messages out the first three we're just introducing you to the fact that he wants you to profit and he's there teaching you to profit then between three and four we started getting into your mind and issues of your mind and then now ver uh, messages eight and nine we're starting to get into the, the issues of your heart besides just your mind and its thoughts but but the the toilsome uh, soil that sometimes the word has to slosh through because of all kinds of different things that are coming at you from the outside not just on the inside and so now we're we're gonna help you um, go even in another direction between 9 and 10 uh, so even in the messages we do that in sequence and we say this is it would do you no good to try to change your mind about prosperity if you didn't know what it was that it was even available you would have nothing to, to gauge by. And so you've got to lay down the fact that prosperity is a thing in the Bible and it's a thing for you. Before I tell you how to obtain it, what might be coming against you, keeping you from getting it, um, adjustments, shifts, shifts, changes, you just need to know that it's a thing, <laughs> you see. And that's the kind of the first level you start. So understanding is to put together, to comprehend, and to act piously, or you'd even say intentionally. How can I act intentionally on the things that I'm hearing pieced together in my spirit? That's a real good understanding definition. Then if you go to the word receive, where in Mark 4, 18, he says, they receive the word and bring forth fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold. 
um, this word receive is to admit by implication. In other words, you hear this preached on prosperity, and one of the telltale signs that you received it is inside yourself is this voice saying, yep, that's me, that's me, that's for me, that's me, that's mine, uh-huh, yep, right here. See, that's, that's how you can tell you're receiving the word. Admitting by implication, yep, your honor, that's me. <laughs> I'm the prosperous one, that's right. Right here, guilty as charged. And, um, and so you'll see together that you piece it together and you piece it together by admitting that that's pieced together for me. That's understanding and receiving. Uh, to not reject, to accept, and to take it upon yourself. I ain't gonna wait for my neighbor to do it for me, I ain't gonna wait for God to do it for me. That's me and watch my feet kick up dust, performing acts of sacred service, getting this job done. So, uh, kind of like if you have a child, you say, well, that's my son. That's my daughter. You would acknowledge them. That's receiving the word on prosperity. Like in the same way you would acknowledge that that's your child. That's the level of receiving. That's the level of understanding that causes 30, 60, and 100 fold to come forth. And so if you go back to Mark 4 and you look at verse 18, after we talked about shallow lack of understanding soil as one of the reasons the word doesn't bear fruit, um, besides the fact they may not understand it, they might not receive it, um, is they have no root in themselves. And so they endure, but for a time, you have a surface shallow understanding, but you have no depth of, of patience in the face of persecution. You have no depth um, that if pressure comes because I've heard this word, that I won't quit and give up, turn tail and run home. And how many marriages fail because of pressure came and one of them turned around and went home, one of them turned around and ran off. What does that tell? They have, they, have, they, they have no root in themselves. They're not a very deep person. They don't have very deep faith roots. Come on now, don't shout me down because I'm preaching real good. So he says afterwards, when affliction or persecution, and that word affliction is pressure. So whenever they're pressured or persecuted for the word because they don't have any root in themselves, immediately they are offended and so now the word's not going to bear fruit so these are people that deal with petty little offenses the minute they're persecuted for being a prosperity person oh well you know that i just was just trying that out oh well you know i just got to hold some bad teaching and please accept me back into the club please love me <laughs> come on now that's the truth you're gonna have to have some guts to stand up and be counted financially because they're, they're coming. They'll come at you. They'll have something to say. I've had people, I've said this before, I've had people leave a meeting I preached at, loved it, went outside of the parking lot to see what car I drove to as to where they's going to finally accept what I said as for them and me not be a heretic or a false preacher. And if my car was too nice, they wasn't going to receive it. And at the time, I was driving old hoopty because, you know, prosperity works whether it's working for you or not. You preach it whether it's showing up in your life or not because it's the truth. <laughs> you don't preach your experience, you preach the Word. And then hopefully one day your experiences will line up with the Word. If you do the right things, it will. Uh, but that's the kind of, there's a lot of folks out there like that. So then he says, and the cares of this world. So now you got, how far back I need to go, but we were talking about making a list of things that might be keeping prosperity from you, whether it's the devil, whether it's a combination um, let me give you that list again so we've got um, confusion you just don't understand what's being said you can't quite piece it together um, a lack an inability to admit that it's yours to just receive um, you know like a child you don't want to admit you have <laughs> whatever or um, just shallow soil you just you're easily offended uh, you can't handle pressure for the word of prosperity. The minute you start talking it and the religious crowd starts crucifying you over it, you shy back and you, you give it up. You walk away, compromise to be fit in. Um, you know, then there's the fact that uh, cares of this world. You know, what would be an example of a care of this world keeping you from... Uh, having prosperity come. Well, I said, well, let's say you wake up in the morning, you got a 
$100 bill and you got a $150, uh, you got a $100 bill in your pocket, you got a $150 bill due. And the Holy Ghost says, give 50 of it away. And I mean, now your mind is tripping because you've, you've got to care of this world. Like you've got to care that that bill is due and that's just going to keep you from obeying the Lord. But what you don't realize is if you don't kick that care to the curb and sow that $50, your phone ain't gonna ring at four o'clock that afternoon with a $200 gift. That's what you don't know because you haven't practiced. You haven't through reason of use stepped out to take that risk, you see. And so let me just give you that list of things that would keep you from profiting. You know, we've got our, our flagship verses, 1 John 2, 27. The anointing abiding in you teaches you concerning all things truthfully. And I would add personally. And then Isaiah 48, 17, I am the Lord that teaches you to profit. Not just teaches your neighbor, not just teaches your pastor, your church, your enemies. It teaches you to profit. Okay, and so then he uses the word, in the, and I'm the one causing you to walk in the way you go. In other words, prosperity is a path. Prosperity is steps that you take. It's a way you align yourself in life. It's where you go, who you talk to, what you do, what you don't do, who you see, who you don't see, what you sow, what you don't sow, you see. And so prosperity, profiting is a path. Where you work, where you don't work. Where you get your degree, where you don't get your degree. You know, what country you live in, what country you don't live in. You see, it's, it's, it's a series, it's steps, it's a path. Isaiah 119 says, if you be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. If there wasn't steps, you wouldn't be tempted and tested with willingness or obedience. And obedience is, you're here, I need you there. You're doing this, I need you doing that. You're doing this, I need you doing it more or better. You see, so it, willingness and obedience, just by, by subtle implication says, it's beyond where you are now in the sense of internally or externally or both. And so if you're unwilling and ungiven to change, prosperity is not for you. In fact, one of the definitions in Proverbs of prosperity is chameleon. You would say adaptability. If you're not a very adaptable person, don't, don't concern yourself with money because a lot of it is not coming to you. And that's just the truth. You're going to have to be adaptable uh, to be successful. And so we said a shallow understanding of the word, rejecting the word, not understanding the word, not piecing it together, uh, being offended because of the word being pressured or persecuted because of it, taking up the cares of this world. Those are things that will all keep profiting and prosperity from coming to you. Worry, fear, doubt. We talked about that in, in lessons four, five, and six. Those things will steal success and prosperity from you. You cannot be a worry wart and expect to be prosperous financially. It will not happen. You cannot be in doubt and faith at the same time. And listen, the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. So don't, don't get it confused, don't get twisted. He loves you whether you're in faith or not. You won't change his love for you. It's not about, you know, he loves me more so he gives me more, no. His love is unchanging. It doesn't need a reason to love, it's its own reason. But now he may or may not be pleased with you. And financial increase comes as your faith grows. That's just the truth, fact of the matter. Financial success is tied to faith, which is tied to pleasing Him. You know, if you could stay poor in faith and please Him, I'm sure a lot of people would take Him up on it. <laughs> it seems like they already are, but you can't. There's just, you, you have to just choose to not see what the Bible says. And He says in Genesis 12 and 3, I will bless those that bless you. I will make you famous. I will give you a name in the whole earth. All the families of the earth will prosper because of you. You will be the head, you will not be the tail, above and not beneath. And so you, that's Abraham, that's your father, that's your patriarch. So you've got to go with what the word says, not with pastor disaster not with your circumstances, not with your wallet. It never ceases to amaze me how many times the Holy Ghost gives instructions to us and we go check our bank accounts to see if we can obey. You don't realize you're doing that, but you're actually asking your bank account for permission to obey your God. Don't do that. That's a care of this world. So then he goes in Mark 4:18 and he says, uh, the deceitfulness of riches. 
Okay, Let, let's say you've got a hundred and that same hundred dollar bill in your pocket. Your neighbor has a bill that's due of a hundred and fifty dollars, and they have seventy five. And so all they need is seventy five more dollars, and you're aware of it. They're your neighbor. You know them. You know their story, and you're not going to give them a dime. You're not going to. It ain't my job. It ain't my responsibility. Because you're going to sit on your money. Well, see, you're deceived by riches. And what you withhold from your neighbor will leave your life. Am I telling you to go pay all your neighbor's bills? No, I'm not. I'm just using it as an analogy. Your neighbor might be your cousin, your relative, your family member, your friend, your enemy, your church member, your, your church. It could be, it's your neighbor is whoever. But when you have it in your power to be a blessing and you don't, now you're deceived with riches. And Solomon said, those riches will grow wings and fly and leave your life. And, the, and he says that there are those that withhold that which is due and it tends only to poverty. And there are those that scatter and it tends only to increase. So you choose, you choose. Then he says, the lust of other things entering in. Okay, you got a hundred dollar bill. Uh, you, your neighbor, you, you, you got a bill for 150, you need 50 more dollars. And you're going to go buy an outfit for 80. <laughs> you're lusting after the outfit to your own destruction. You know, why not believe God, sow a seed, get that bill paid, then go buy an outfit. But because of lust, your life is out of order. Things are out of order in your life. All right? These are just small, simple examples. And he says, those things enter in and they choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. So the word was growing, but then cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, and lust of other things entered in and began to choke the word that you were listening to, that you were growing by, that you were feeding on. And, and I remember this story about Pastor Cho. He pastors the world's largest church in Seoul, Korea. And after the war, World War II, over the, or excuse me, the Korean War and all that, uh, he had a lot of refugees in his church and one day a man came to his church and he says, Pastor Cho, I, I can't feed my family. I need some money to feed my family. And Pastor Cho gave him $20 and he, and he gave him a word from the Lord. He said, go buy some salt. And he says, go stand on the street corner, sell the salt at a profit, keep some for yourself, but just keep reinvesting in salt and reselling it. Today, that man is a multimillionaire. He has lots of people in his church who did that very same thing. And so the word that you're hearing can be choked because you get things out of order. Don't you know that man having trouble feeding his family? Let's say he, he bought $20 worth of salt. He sold it for 40. He's got $20 profit. Don't, what, don't you know he's tempted to go eat that whole $20 profit and feed his family with that? But how's he gonna rebuy salt? You know, how, what's, he gonna, he, what's he gonna keep himself in business, keep hope alive, keep the possibility of succeeding alive? He's eating all that, he's consuming all that with deceitfulness, with cares, with lusts, you see. And it's certainly a shallow understanding of the word he was given. And so you have to have some self-discipline. You have to have some study about you in order to succeed and prosper in this life. So that's, that's number nine, that's, that's gonna be number three today. Uh, go back and listen to the others. W w in, in message number six, I'm going to post it in the comments. It'll have the link to all the other eight messages. Uh, and then, of course, itself. And so go back and listen to those. They're not long, 10, 20, 25 minutes a piece. And uh, listen to it over and over and over. Pass it along. Seems like this has really grown tentacles and legs and spread all over the place. Uh, this teaching on, on He Teaches Us to Profit. And we're really just kind of scratching the surface right now. We're going to get deeper with it as we go along. And and so anyway, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the ears and the understanding of everybody listening, that their eyes would see, their ears would hear, their heart would understand the word that's being spoken, so that therefore it can grow up in their individual life and bear fruit 30, 60, and 100-fold. And we claim that done by faith in Jesus' name. Amen.